This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so as part of this for the observability, I'm going to cover some of the topics which is very important. And that is, let me get it. One thing which we call pod affinity, okay? So Kubernetes pod observability and deep type. So this tutorial which will help you uh, for pod observability. Now here we have one thing which you call pod affinity, which is here. And another one which we have is node affinity and then node selector. So these are the topics which we have uh, for the day. So what is a pod affinity? So let's try to Google it here. And uh, spelling mistake, I guess, N I T affinity. Just yes, let me correct this spelling mistake. So this is the something which we have pod affinity. So let's Google it this, uh, in the blog. And here it is. So now understanding node selector and node affinity. This is the second one. And here now for paint and toleration, I've covered in the last top topic. Pod affinity, I'm not able to get it. Mm, let me see here. Is there? So yeah. So let's try to understand this. So here, uh, you know the Kubernetes scheduler, correct? All of you, which is a part of Kubernetes master, correct? No? All of you. Hello, I'm audible, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So scheduler is the one who decide. Okay what to schedule for where to schedule for so by default there is a two things one is affinity and one is a non-affinity if you remember my architecture discussion in that i was saying hey schedule can be hack can have affinity and non-affinity non-affinity means scheduler will use their own logic but now it can be influenced also so how can you influence so these are the ways in which you can influence so tent and toleration i discussed in the last session uh, tent, pod and unpod and, and all stuff like that. But in these sessions, we'll discuss about the, the pod level aff uh, affinity. So one of the ways in which you can influence the scheduler is called node selector. Okay. So here you are saying, hey, scheduler, schedule the pod, but only if the criteria is true. So that, that is where you can decide which node has to be selected. This is called node selector. So let's understand this. Kubernetes scheduler can be constrained to a place, a pod on particular node using few different options. And these options are this one. In a pod specification, there are many ways in which you declare a pod should be dedicated to specific node. Right now, okay, uh, these options are node selector, node affinity, pod affinity, also we call it interpod affinity and anti affinity also. Okay, and tent tolerations. So now what is the net node selector? So while defining the pod, okay, pod, which you can define in the kind is called pod or application controller, you can define deployment, you can define stateful, you can define daemon set, you can define all these things, you can define the uh, uh, pod. And that is where you can select, you can say, hey, deploy, hey, should really deploy that uh, this pod only in the place where you have uh, this node. So how do you, how do you define? So let me show you here the code of node selector a second this, this is a pretty long one so i just want to see, search for it code i'll explain you all this thing a little bit later here it is first i want to show you the code so what do you want kind is equal to pod okay so pod here affinity what affinity node affinity and here you can select that node selector now node selector so uh, this affinity this this part is the part of the code is for the scheduler 
where schedule will get it aff aff affinated to the node affinity and the condition is read this one first required during scheduling ignore during execution and here you have a prefer during scheduling ignore during execution so there are two method to set the affinity so here required means it has to be match this but uh, in this year you are saying prefer prefer means if it is not matching then you can deploy to other node also that's not a problem so here it says requirements uh, only deploy this particular pod this is the name of the pod to the node where it is matching so what is matching so see here this is a match expression and the key should be this one in operator this value and this value that means uh, any any node where you have a key is this one and value this one and this one then deploy this particular pod are you understanding all of you hello are you understanding yes 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 yeah so this is called no. node select so we're, we're not sure like what exactly this node affinity means like if you can little bit brief okay. again so huh. so node affinity means it's a field uh, see here scheduler have affinity and non-affinity so when you want to assign affinity so you have to start with the field affinity so here you see pod dot spec dot affinity dot node affinity dot uh, this and then this and is equal to this so this is the field specification field sub field and also sort of thing okay how do you see that let me show you rather than talking so kubectl explain this command i have explained you last time explain pod dot spec dot look at this uh, what is this uh, okay sorry this machine is not running where is the uh, qctl get knows uh, so qctl explain pod dot spec so here if you see that uh, see toleration which i talked about last time and here a on top of it you have to go somewhere you see affinity now see that here if she specified the pod scheduling constraint that means scheduler you are setting up uh, information for the scheduler so dot affinity and you see that here node affinity pod affinity pod anti affinity so these are the options so i was discussing about the node affinity so if you look at the code uh, affinity node affinity and then all this thing will come so now if you see that just a second. Hmm. So if you see that node affinity dot affinity and these are the fields you have two options now preferred where if you if the condition is not matching you may deploy to any nodes but if you say like like this then it has to deploy in only those nodes where that uh, pod only in this node the pod the condition is matching so here if you see that so like this you can play with all the fields so see here these are the other understood hello uh, so what will be the use case for this uh huge case yeah so what is happening Think about it. Uh, let's say one of the developer is coming and saying, "Hey, uh, listen, uh, do one thing. Uh, deploy this particular code. Uh, deploy this deployment in the node in the node where you have a more than uh, 60 GB of uh, hard disk, or maybe your architecture is ARM, or maybe your CPU is this kind of architecture." Uh, your storage is ssd or hsd something like this so that way you will uh, remember that in the clusters you don't have one or two cluster uh, node worker you have thousands of different different types of worker and that you label it as per the architecture as per the size as per the space as per the cpu as per the memory all this thing and that way when the people will come with the classification saying that hey i want to you to deploy this pod but only with this these other condition so that way you can uh, write this code with a what specifications only make sense 
Okay. So now I'll, I'll show you here one more simple example. Here you see that pod and here you have a containers and this container should be deployed only where the node selector where the key and value is matching, key and value matching. So simple code is there for understand. Here again you want more example. So see that deploy the pod, uh, this container only if the node selector disk type is SSD. Here uh, key and value this is generic one but here example if, if the node has a key and uh, disk type and value ssd then deploy this container in that one for example you want to see the, all the labels of the node so let me show you you will get the clarity so many labels get added uh, in the uh, you know uh, in the uh, by default but you can also add the label i taught you how to add the labels now see here so i have a two worker actually two master and you see so many so many labels are there this is a one label and this is the value this is a one label and this is the value you see that so now you say okay i want to deploy the pod only if this os is linux or maybe you are saying uh, uh, something like uh, mm, host name is master or host name is worker getting your points these all are labels actually let me show you the simple way see any more points uh, yeah 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 so now coming back to the topics again go back again we have to finish this this is a very important topic so yes uh, these are the ways in which you have a uh, to influence the scheduler one of this is node selector so now node selector is the simplest recommended form of node selection constraint it's the simplest one okay node selector is a field of pod spec i showed you the code at the bottom section it specifies the map of key and value pairs for the pod to be uh, to to be run on the node okay so the last one which i showed you which is the simplest form of code somewhere i have to search one more time here so look at this here what you want pod okay and this is a image node selector and your key if it is a key value is this one then deploy this pod in that simple okay so this is the simplest form of uh, influencing the pod. Uh, so that's all. So for the node, for the pod to be eligible on the uh, to run on the node, the node must have each of the indicated key values pairs as labeled. Okay, it can have additional label as well. So now built-in node labels. So just now I showed you some of the built-in node labels. So that is the written node labels and you can add a more labels also to the node depends on your work. When you plan for the larger architecture, no? then you label it properly okay, while creating the clusters. Now, the so that is a node selector. Now, second thing is affinity. So affinity feature consists of two types of affinity. One is node affinity and one is inter-pod affinity. So see here, understand this way. Node selector was the simplest form of uh, you know influencing the scheduler to deploy the pod but it can get affinity also okay so affinity feature consists of two type of uh, types of affinity node affinity and inter pod affinity which is we call it anti affinity also so look at this here this first image is a node selector and second image this is also node selector see that and node affinity so now uh, kubernetes also has more Newest way of setting affinity called node affinity and pod affinity. Okay, so what exactly this? So node selector provide a very simple way to constrain constrain pod to node with particular labels. Okay, simplest way, which I showed you the code. But there is a problem in the node selector. They do not provide expressive way. So now you say what is expressive way? So look at the code and then you will see that. Uh, uh, I have showed you. Look at this code. Expressive means operators here in operator in. So these are the expressive means more detailed way. See that this is the JSON format. You get confused, so I'll just leave it as it is. This is also JSON. And now you see that here node selector easy way. So here you don't have expression. Okay, here you don't have expression. So for that. When you want to have a multiple condition in or out this that and all kind of things then you have to use the pod affinity 
node selector do not provide that expression so here you see that node affinity is a conceptually similar to node selector but node affinity allows users to be more expressive way the pod to nodes with the particular labels are you understanding so node affinity provide more expression options compared to node selector so initially we had a node selector later on it got introduced the node affinity also so both our options are there are you understanding all of you so basically in node affinity we can provide more options and labels according to our needs is that um, correct no basically we can provide conditions actually operators uh, if both are okay. true both are true then assign this node if one is failed then don't assign like that in or in or something like this getting it so here the affinity anti affinity feature greatly expand the type of constraint you can express the key key enhancement are some of the enhancement which you can do that which is uh, you know required soft or preferred or something like that which i show i talked about earlier also so now here the affinity feature consists of two type of affinity uh, one is node affinity one is anti affinity okay so node affinity node affinity is like the existing node selector but with the first two benefit listed above what are the benefits these are the benefits where you can prefer or required you can specify see logical and logical or you can specify all these things okay uh, inter pod affinity anti affinity uh, anti affinity inter pod affinity anti affinity constraint against the pod label rather than node label so this is something which is different so here mind it here node affinity works on the labels of node but inter pod affinity which is anti affinity one works on the uh, conditions upon the labels of pod that is a difference okay so for example I'll, i'll put it in this way so here you are saying hey i want to deploy the pod in a certain nodes where certain conditions are met like a key is equal to value this that and all. logical and also you can use it but here in inter pod affinity which is called anti affinity also here we are saying hey deploy this pod in a node where the pod is running with this label so that may you you are saying hey deploy this pod <coughs> to the node where the similar pod is already running are you understanding <coughs> all of you mm, yes of you? yes <coughs> yeah so you see all this topic no observability is just to understand this thing code is very simple Four line, four lines of code is there, but if you don't understand that, it will be very difficult. So understand that. So here there are multiple ways to uh, influence the scheduler, node selector, node affinity, pod affinity, tens and toleration. I discussed already. So here I'm talking about these two right now. So go back to uh, here. So that is done. So these are fields under the pod metadata which I showed you just now. Uh, take automatic and user defined metadata to dictate where the schedules where to schedule the pod affinity differ from the node selector in a different way okay some of the differences are there now uh, types of node affinity okay so there are currently two types of node affinity one is called required one is called preferred i showed you requirements hard rule prefer means okay if you are not finding the nodes deploy to the other nodes also it's okay so it's like that okay now node affinity example so look at this node affinity this is the pod dot spec dot affinity dot node affinity and this is expressive which was not there in the node selector mind it okay not selector code again i'm showing you this kind of expression you cannot have it you have a very straight forward key and value key and value if it is matching deploy into that node but here you can write expression more expressive way here you are, here you are saying hey do you have this key either value this one or this one see here this in value this one and this one and this is required then deploy and if this you are not able to find it then go for this particular uh, key and value and deploy in that so here between see that here you have only one option so key value key in value this one and here you have a two options so like that you can play so more expressive way more detailed way you can put the conditions are you understanding all of you yeah, yes yes 
yeah so this is the json i'll not talk about json because you'll get confused more and this is also json leave it now this is a node selector i showed you 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 now he see here what is this so this is this is the one example look at this here so here we are saying look at the pod uh, look at my cursor here you are saying node affinity and uh, here the value for the my key should be level 1 and level 2 so see here node is labeled with my key level 1 and here node is my, uh, labeled with my key level 3 and you see that where the pseudoled is deploying the pod because it's matching example i mean image if you can understand easily yes yeah so this is something which is important so now now next one i just said uh, interpod affinity which is anti affinity which is not based on the labels of node but based on the labels of pod that means this uh, huge cases where you can you can apply so you can apply in a cer certain ways where the same pod you want to deploy the pod in the same node where the similar pod has been deployed pod labels okay so how do you do that so look at this here pod affinity this is the pod affinity and here you have a pod anti affinity so this this pod affinity i just discussed okay but here pod anti affinity and here we are saying hey preferred 100 percent of this pod which you are deploying okay where the label selector for the pod okay we are matching with the security key is security in s2 means if security is equal to s2 then deploy that pod okay are you understanding this is called pod anti affinity based on the pod label all of you um, okay so look at uh, can you can you can you please explain this again anti infinity yeah so affinity. here uh, let let's uh, let's do it from once again so here pod dot spec affinity so here pod affinity so deploy this pod in a node required you see required where this label support this is the label support security in s1 that means here you are saying deploy this particular pod where the pods labeled with security is equal to s1 whereas whereas pod anti affinity means uh, avoid that that uh, node where the pod you have s2 okay so pod label with s2 that means avoid that particular node where you have a deployed pod where you s2 that means this pod the one which you want to deploy here this image you want to deploy this image is mean for s1 related node not s2 related node okay that way okay so now if you see the examples look at this here this is called pod anti affinity so here you see uh anti affinity which is set uh, the security s1 and here you have a node 2 uh, and a node 1 a node 1 security s1 and here node 2 security s2 and security s1 uh, so here what you are happy uh, having see that this pod is not deployed in the pod 1 is not deployed in the node 1 where it got deployed in the node 2 okay so this way you can see that so this is the pod affinity node affinity pod anti affinity and so on any questions on this all of you any questions on this uh, no okay so now this is a very important topic for for the uh, for the pod observability now one of the topic which i'm going to talk about which is very important and that is called rbac did we call rbac did we cover rbac no uh, we haven't covered okay so here guys understand this this is an important topic so please focus so here one is called authentication and another one is called authorizations authorization so authentication means what i think you know that i don't have to drag this how to log in that is how to log in do i need to log in user id and password ldap or sso or something certificate how to log in once you log in 
what you are allowed to do correct no allowed to do correct all of you hello yes yeah so now let's open up this tool it will be easy for me to copy paste the code so um, are back Kubernetes authentication. Authentications. The spelling mistake, I guess. Yeah. So this is the one. Okay. So you'll be having recording in this session. So guys, understand this. Authentication means how do you log into the system, which is in our case Kubernetes. Authorization means if you logged in, okay, what you are allowed to do. So what are the method of authentication in Kubernetes? So we have a certificate based, token based, open ID, and web book. These are the four methods. Few more will be there in the official documents you should refer. Now, by the way. Uh, workstation talk to API server using which authentications? All of you? All of you? Anyone? Did you see the config file? All of you? Cube config? So, guys, we need to focus on this actually. You guys have to practice again. So, actually, certificate based authentication. So, all this API server and all, we authenticate based on the certificate okay by the way did, while adding the node to the clusters did you remember that token we provided bootstrap token anyone remember that no remember the cube adm join command and all uh, am i audible right yeah so guys we need to practice yeah. actually Okay, so here these are the method of authentication supported in Kubernetes. So certificate and token. Now, what are the how certificate based token works that we need to discuss? And token invis I'll talk about also. So these are the two methods which I'll talk about. So certificate based authentication, how it works, you know. So first of all, user okay, create a private key. Okay, I'll show you the demo also. After the user, generate a CSR file. After that CSR file user sent to the administrator of the cluster and administrator using the CSR and CA file, they create certificate file. And after that administrator provide the resulting certificate back to the user and the user use that certificate to get access. That is how uh, certificate based authentication works. If you have uh, no idea, just please read out the uh, offline some of the materials. Certificate based authentication is not only useful for Kubernetes, but for many other projects also. Okay, so that is the something which we did. Now, how the token based authentication works. So we have used the bootstrapping through the token. This part, token part, uh, the token based authentication, I'll discuss later also. So now what to do? Uh, so now I want to create a, I want to have a certificate. So what to do? So let's look at this, my screen, all of you. It's very simple. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do, I am going to become a user and I am going to generate a certificate. I mean, so private key. So, this is the step number one. Now, if you see that, I got the key, this is the private key. Now, using this key, I am going to generate a CSR file. How do I generate a CSR file? This is the code for it, OpenSSL. Now, request new what CSR file using what private key subject. This is the username, this is the group name. Okay. If you are not understanding OPS SSL, little bit of offline study, you can do that on this also. So, yes, I got a CSR file. Now, CSR file, I will send it to the administrator of the Kubernetes cluster. You know, fortunately, I am the administrator and running the same command in the same server. So, I can use it. I don't have to email this one to anyone. So, what to do? So, you send a CSR file through email or some APIs is also there, CSR API. You can send it. And what admin will do? 
admin will convert this CSR request to the certificate file. So how? Open SSL. This is the admin command. Okay. And this is a CSR file. Certificate for CA is this one. And this is a current path which I'm using. Okay. So this should be available. Yeah. See here. So I'm in the master server mind data. And this is for the five days, 500 days. And this is certificate file which will be output. So generate this certificate by admin. Now this you got a certificate file here. So now this certificate file admin will send to the user back. Okay, this certificate file. So now I'm acting like a user. So user have a certificate file and employee.txt key, which is a private key. And that these two files is needed for authenticated, authenticating the Kubernetes cluster. Understood all of you? Oh, yes, yes. I think this is a similar concept to how we use for uh, SSL certificates for websites. Yes, yes. Certificate based, yeah. certificate based authentication is common across the worldwide. The only thing is we need to put it in the context properly. Okay. So here CA is your master server, mind it. Right. Okay. So now this we did it. Now the question is how do we set it? So if you remember that cube config file, we did it actually. So this command will help you to set a user. So whatever you are doing through the command line, manually you can modify, but you'll, you'll have a lots of error for that. So kubectl config, what user, what user, employee, which I set it up using this one. And where is the employee certificate? So this is the certificate. Where is the key? This is the key. Am I having the same location? Yes, same locations. So can I set this? Before that, I'll show you. Mind it, look at my screen, guys. And here, see that user, how many users you have? Only one user. Now this command will set one more user. Enter. And here, how many users you have? Two users. One employee, second admin. So now you got a user. Now this command will set the context. So here you are setting up the name of the context, employee context, where the cluster is same, only one cluster, but namespace office and the username is employee for this context. So let me set it up by the way namespace employee you don't have it office sorry offices don't have it so can we create it somewhere mm, let me create here hmm. now done so now i set the new context now what is the context what is the cluster what is the user all these things we, we have discussed in the one session after that setting up the cluster now can I check whether my the context, which is employee context, which I set it up, is having permission or not to what? Getting the bots. See, forbidden. So this user, which is employee, do not have access to get a pods in the office namespace. Correct, no? So that means the authentication has been done, but the authorization is missing part. Correct, no? All of you. I am able to log in, but I cannot do anything. Something like that. Are you able to understand this? Yes. Okay. So now authorization part will come into the picture. So how do we authenticate the user, which is called in my case employee, uh, to access that certain resources? So that is where that four authentication method, which is available uh, in the Kubernetes node, A back, R back, and web. Now I'm only focusing on R back, which is a production ready, and we use it for the every time whether you are offline or online, production, test, QA environment, development environment, we use the RBAC. So what is RBAC? So RBAC means role based access control. Very simple. So now it works like this. Okay. Whom you want to give access? User or group. So user is employee. Group is, if you if you noticed, here this is a group, Vietnamese. Okay. This is the user, this is the group. Okay. So whom you want to give access? User or group? What access you want to give? Get list, watch, create, update, patch, delete. Where you want to give access? This API resources or group of resources, you know that. How do we get it? This command will tell you. Okay, so whom, user, what access, all this thing, where you want to give it, all the resources, how? Using RBAC. Are you understanding all of you? Hello? Yes. Yeah. So what to do? Uh, yes. So guys, yeah. So guys, but it's very simple thing. You will create step number one. You will create a role. Okay. Role. Where is a role? 
So if you see that, let me minimize this. Uh, you will create a role. So this is the subject means user and group. This is the resources and these are the access. So uh, user, group and service account. Service account is a user only, but let me give you the difference. User means real user and service account means user which is required for internal component to access each other. Okay, so every time you'll see service account, a lot of service account will be created. So QCTL get SK hyphen A. See, there's so many service accounts. So these are the not a human, it's for the internal component accessing each other and all. It's been created, service account. So you can give a service account also access, but right now focusing on the user and group. Now see that user and group, you are having the role. Okay, and role you are binding with user, with the user and group. So I think little confusion, but I will help you with that in a simple way. This image you will not be able to understand straightforward. So I'll tell you very simple way. Uh, what you have to do, first thing, you have to create a role. This is the role. So now we'll say Rajesh, okay, in the role, what we'll have? So in the role, you'll specify uh, what resources you want, okay, and uh, uh, what resources you want, and uh, what access you want and which user to be given this is the things okay so users let it okay sorry my bad only resources and what access to be given okay which is resources and what access to be now this is the user and this is the group on this is the sa account and this is the group okay so now what happened this if you want this user to assign to this role or this SA account to assign to this role or this uh, group you want to assign to this role then you have to use role binding so role binding will have a two things roles plus user or group or uh, SA are you understanding all of you yes okay one important thing please remember role we create this is we are creating role role we create to assign access to the namespace level i repeat namespace level so then you say rajesh i want to assign some user access to the cluster level then what will do what what to do then you don't create a role for that you create a cluster role everything will remain same the only the api will get changed actually Cluster role, then you say Rajesh, okay, cluster role, I'll create it. And then how do we bind the user to the uh, cluster role? So then he'll become a not a role binding, he'll become a cluster role binding. That's the only difference. Remember that role is scope is namespace, cluster role scope is cluster wide. Okay, so now let's create a first role. Let me show you that. So now all these images, now you'll understand with this context. So now let's create a role. So how do we create a role? so here it is just look at the only code which i'm selecting okay okay so what do you want role what is the for which uh, namespace office what is the name of the role here which group which uh, api group you want to give access what resources you want to give access what access you want to give it or this specify in the role simple get it all of you All of you? Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah. So now what I'll do, I'll just copy this code. And this code you can find the internet hell out of it. But the only thing is this code is having problem. This is the problem. So it's a V1 actually. Okay. So copy this code and clear the screen. VI role dot YAML enter and here save it qct all this command you know that by now okay so i don't have to teach you there's no roles okay there's no roles in the office also okay and then i'm going to create a role so uh, this this role will be created in office okay so qct will apply hyphen f rules whatever created now you see that here role is created now next thing what i have to do i have to assign this uh, user to the to the role so how do you start role binding so which user user is employee here if it's kind of group it can be it can be service account also so here which user 
which role deployment manager that's all so here this also v1 has become a v1 so role binding let me change this one has become v1 now it's a very old code i am using and this change it so here rb right so vi rb dot yaml uh, real binding okay and done and apply this done and then see here get rules role binding spelling mistake oh there's a spelling mistake huh? there's a role binding so now i created a role now you see that here is the role and i bind it to the this user which is i created earlier employee and now what i will do i will just try to check whether do you have access or not so can we check this remember that earlier i was not having forbidden access so can we check this and i have it and can i get it now by the way by, by the way by the way i have this access also see and this is in the office office namespace okay mind it i have it i deployed this one image simple now remember that i did not assign service access see that resources deployment replica set pod but service i have not used. so can i see that yes we see see yes this is forbidden what do you need to do you know that you have to modify this role and automatically this user will have a service access understood guys all of you yes okay so now this is for the uh, uh, namespace level but if you want to say rajesh i want to create a cluster role uh, rajesh, same I have a question. yeah yeah hello uh, rajesh as a user like let's say i'm not a master i'm a user or a group or a so uh, as a user like how can i know like what are the uh, actions uh, i have access to? like as a user uh, uh how can i know like which uh, which commands i can execute and I, I have permission for those yeah so this command i covered in the last session only guys you have to practice it this command uh where is it even i'm forgetting but i'll tell you that command mm, my god this is done huh? is there... so here qctl auth uh what can i hyphen do you remember this can i create pod c can i create svc in namespace which is office no yes okay sorry this is, okay i'm using this uh, uh, my admin access no i have to use the context this one i can do that but the context which is set no got it hello Uh, ah yeah. yeah yeah yes 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 yeah so you can check like this yeah this create read, read update later okay so coming back to this thing so you say rajesh i want to assign some users to the cluster level access what to do i think you know the answer simply change the uh, role to the cluster role and everything will remain same okay only the kind will become changed and then how do you bind it cluster role binding here this group your binding manager with the the name of the cluster or secret reader that's all so guys this is called authentication on authorization okay one one topic is pending in this which is a token which i'll talk about in cubadium session actually cubadium is one session dedicated we have so i'll have to do that any questions so far all of you so right now you have uh, logged in with the admin uh, access admin user right which uh, the moment uh, the moment i do not provide any context so that's the admin context the but moment i provide the this context that means uh, employee context okay so let, let's say if this user wants to uh, log in so first like he has to have that uh, certificate uh, mm -hmm. authorized by admin yes. then he can log in and then he can, uh, so user, user will, correct. 
so if user wants to access this he has to create a context or it can be default context also and he has to add this 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 line which i showed you authentication section not authorized is authorized so this will be helpful in case like we have multiple uh, members with the different uh, assignments and responsibilities working on a particular project you, yes yes you have a multiple cluster and multiple user multiple different level of authentication so here this is the list of clusters list of users list of context you can create as many you want and one context which is a default which is you have okay so when you run you do not specify the context then that context is being used which is the admin format for me now any questions guys no no okay so this is the topic for the two uh, for the day we talked about two things one is fraud observability second one is authentication and authorization so you guys practice it and uh, i have one more topic uh, in fact two more topic pending uh, for this one is qvadm uh, and one is backup and restore process so i'll i'll, I'll tell you when i'll, I'll about that. okay see you tomorrow bye everyone sure thank you Bye.